kid and welcome to your kid time story time where we're getting what wait I'm sorry what is that music excuse me excuse me ladies and gentlemen and kids of kid time story time what do you drink red bear I have an announcement to make and it is green bear my fellow green Americans I welcome you to this extra patriotic kid time story time starring me green bear and now I shall sing a beautiful song. Um, I think that maybe instead of doing that... Why'd you do my music? Well, I, I think that maybe we should start reading the book first, and then maybe later you can do the song. Uh, manager? Yeah? What do you think? Well, it, it's kind of her thing to read a book, so maybe we should let her do it first, and then we could have you sing the song? Like, maybe it's like your warm-up back? Okay, I accept. Since it's a warm-up back to my big song, you may proceed with America, a patriotic primer. Oof, good thing Red Bear stepped in there to help negotiate. Okay, here we go. America. I'm looking forward to this book. It is beautiful, it is colorful, and it is informative. Hey! is for America, the land that we love. And he says here, Oh, beautiful for patriot dreams that seize beyond the years. Thine alabaster cities gleam undimmed by human tears. <gasps> and here's a, a, a little bit of a quote from the poem that is on the Statue of Liberty. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. B is for birthday, the birthday nation of this nation of ours. Uh, on America's birthday, there ought to be pomp and parade. John Adams, our second president, wrote to his wife, Abigail. And illuminations from one end of this continent to the other, from this time forward, forevermore. Wow, so that is why we have one of the biggest, brightest birthday parties any country's ever seen. C is for the Constitution that binds us together. That's the famous government document upon which the entire American government is founded. It starts off, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. That's the preamble, the introduction. And it says here, the Constitution has been the framework for our government for more than 200 years. James Madison, one of our presidents, said, The happy union of these states is a wonder. Their constitution is a miracle. Their, hope, the, their example, the hope of liberty throughout the world. Now, shortly before the Declaration of Independence was accepted, John Adams wrote to his wife, Abigail. Oh, there they are writing again. I am well aware of the toil and blood and treasure that it will cost us to... Wow, it's hard to read upside down. Maintain this declaration and support and... Wow, I can read upside down. Defend the states. Yet through all the gloom, I can see the rays of ratio, ravishing light and glory. That is lovely. D is for the declaration that proclaimed we are free. That's the Declaration of Independence signed in July 4th, 1776 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And that declared us to be free and independent. From what country were we trying to be free? I know this one. I know this one. Uh, Red Bear, you're upside down. Oh, sorry, I was uh, goofing around. Um, we, we, were, we were trying to get free from England. Very good. Thank you, Red Bear. You can go back to standing on your head again. E is for equality. The Declaration of Independence established the principle that all are created equal and have God-given rights to live, to be free, and to pursue happiness. Yay! I love happiness. I'm very pro-happy. That's very good. Over the years, more and more of us have been able to enjoy these rights equally. F is for freedom and the flag that we fly and the pledge that we make to the flag every day. So all kinds of great factoids all around here and even shows us how to fold a flag. And like that, and then you do this and you fold it in. Wow, it's complicated. Wow. G is for God in whom we trust. Freedom to worship as they chose brought people to America. Freedom to worship as we choose sustains our country today. And they show pictures of the pilgrims. You remember that they sailed to America in 1620, searching for freedom to worship God in their own way because they couldn't do that in England. And that, of course, led to them meeting the Native Americans who were already here. And then that led to the first Thanksgiving, which we celebrate to this day. And God 
bless America. There's the G again. H is for heroes and I for ideals. Heroes remind us of our nation's ideals and how important it is to live up to them. Ideals meaning the idea of something that can be the very best, brightest hope for all of us. So some of our heroes we admire from afar and others are part of our everyday lives. Who do we admire from afar? Maybe the pioneers since we don't know them anymore. People in the military, firefighters, police, teachers, elected leaders, doctors and nurses, astronauts. These are all people who we admire and who are heroic and sustain the ideals of our country. J is for Jefferson! In 17, 1776, Thomas Jefferson wrote that Declaration of Independence, which was our letter, what? D! He was the first Secretary of State, the second Vice President, and our third President. He did a lot. K is for King, Dar Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He fought for justice with prayers, peaceful marches, and some of the most powerful words our nation has ever heard. I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Do you know what that means? Yeah, I do, I do, I do. Okay, Red Bear, hit me. I mean, content of the character means that they are not judged by how they look on the outside, but by who they are on the inside. Am I right? Am I right? You are right. What do I win? Deep life knowledge that will sustain you throughout your entire life. Oh, I want a chocolate. Okay, moving on. L is for Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president, who guided our nation during the Civil War and was determined that we would continue to be a single nation. And he wrote here, I happen temporarily to occupy this big White House. I am a living witness that any one of your children may look to come here as my father's child has. Meaning anyone in America can grow up to be president. He was poor and he barely had an education. He taught himself everything he knew and look where he got from being a poor farm boy. M is for Madison, James Madison, our fourth president. So important when our nation was getting caught started that he is called the father of the Constitution. He was primarily responsible for the Bill of Rights. And it says here, he says, the advice nearest to my heart is that the union of the states be cherished and perpetuated. Meaning that the union of all the different states that were coming together to become the United States should be cherished, loved, taken care of, and perpetuated and grow. And they did from 13 to 50 today. N is for Native Americans who came here first. And here we have all sorts of pictures of all kinds of different people who were Native Americans throughout our history. Sacagawea, a Shoshone woman who guided and translated for Lewis and Clark when they explored the West, Sacagawea. She's very important. And she did it all carrying a baby on her back. Hello. Oh, the Navajo code talkers during World War II, they used their language as a code so that the Japanese would never find out what their secret plans were, their military plans. So that was an important military strategy, thanks to them. Then here's Maria Tallchief. Isn't that a cool name, Maria Tallchief? Uh, I would like to be known from here on out, yes, as a, 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 a not so tall bearish. No, oh, that doesn't sound so good. I'm going to work on that. Okay. Maria Tallchief of the Osage tribe became a prima ballerina. And here's Ben Nighthorse Campbell, one of 44 chiefs of the Northern Cheyenne tribe and a U.S. Senator from Colorado. See? People throughout history. O is for the oath new Americans take. I hereby declare on oath that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America. And there's more to it than that, but that... Right there, it's one of the most important things you say when you become an American citizen. P is for patriotism that fills our hearts with pride. And another quote from John Adams, president number two. Our obligations to our country never cease, but with our lives. Meaning that our obligation to our country lasts our entire life to support it and to make it the very best it could be and live up to its ideals and maybe even become one of its heroes. Q is for America's quest for the new, the far, and the very best. 
What does that mean? So many things. And here are people who represent different aspects of the quest. Benjamin Franklin, an inventor, a scientist, a statesman. He was always on a quest for knowledge, scientific and also political. Orville and Wilbur Wright, who created the first successful flight. Althea Gibson, a tennis champion. Louis Armstrong, a jazz trumpeter, a singer, a band leader. Emily Dickinson, a groundbreaking poet. Baseball legend, Babe Ruth. Modern dance innovator, Martha Graham. World known architect, I M Pei. Thomas Edison, inventor of the light bulb. And the motion picture projector, that's the movies. See? It's always on a quest to do something grand that hasn't been done before, whether it's flying a plane or landing on the moon or creating something that will last forever or creating something that's beautiful and artistic that make people happy and fill their hearts. R is for the rights we are guaranteed. Our basic rights are set forth in the Constitution and its amendments. And the first 10 amendments that you heard about earlier are called the Bill of Rights. What are these rights? These are things that our country's founders specifically put in the Constitution for us, for you, kid. Freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, Freedom of assembly, that means to gather together, to go a protest, to gather with your friends and family for whatever reason. A, a freedom, a right to keep and bear arms. Arms, meaning not your arms, your guns. Right to trial by jury, right to vote. These are all important rights. S is for suffrage. This is another big right. That's the right to vote. In 1848, in Seneca Falls, New York, women began the long struggle for suffrage because, you know, women weren't initially allowed to vote in this country. They thought only men could vote. Or, so in 1920, their voting rights were recognized all across the nation. The ladies who fought to get suffrage, the right to vote, were called suffragettes. And they had names like Lucretia Mott, Lucy Stone, Susan B. Anthony, you've probably heard of her, Sojourner Truth, Esther Hobart Morris, Amelia Bloomer. There's a lot of interesting ladies who fought that battle. T is for tolerance. Free to think and believe and pursue happiness in our own way. We recognize the rights of others to do the same. Like, like I like the pursuit of baseball, for example. But my brother, he prefers the pursuit of math problems. So we're different, but it makes us happy in our own way. And I let him do his thing and he lets me do my thing. And then sometimes he comes and cheers for me. And then sometimes I go and I'm like, oh, what are you doing? You're doing math. Oh, how boring. And then I leave, but I leave him alone. You know, it's like that. Like that. <laughs> I'm so smart. Uh, U is for United States. Our country is big, y'all. Our people come from every part of the world, but different as we are, we're all part of a single nation, the United States of America, and we are made stronger by our differences because we are enriched by them and we learn from each other and we celebrate all kinds of things. You know, we celebrate Hanukkah that's Jewish and then Mardi Gras is actually Catholic and they do that the Tuesday before Lent. And then over here we have St. Patrick's Day for the Irish, Ramadan is, is, is Islamic, we have Christmas, that's Christian. We have Holocaust Remembrance. I mean, we have so many holidays that we celebrate. Here's Labor Day, here's Martin Luther King Day. Oh, wait, I just lost it, there it is. So we have a lot of things that we've brought from other places and some have been created here like Thanksgiving. V is for the valor shown by those who've kept us free. And that's the soldiers from so many different wars, World War I, World War II, but there's so many wars that you may not have even heard about. But these are all independent wars and battles that have always helped keep our country free and strong. W is for Washington, George Washington, our first president, and he's called the father of our country. He was brave in battle and very dignified, and he was celebrated as the man who unites all hearts. There's a good picture of him right there. And it says here, he was unanimously elected president and took the oath of office in 1789. Where? In New York City, because Washington DC did not exist yet. X marks the spot. What spot? Well, Plymouth, Massachusetts is the spot where the pilgrims landed. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, that's where they had the Declaration of Independence and Constitution written up and signed. New York, where you just heard that George Washington was inaugurated as the first president. You know, we have important locations all over our country that are historic locations. That's why I love traveling the country and learning more about 
how this country was born and grew. Y is for you. Me? You. <laughs> and all you will be in this greatest of countries, the land of the free. And a quote from Benjamin Franklin, the noblest question in the world is, what good may I do in it? And I want you to ask yourself, kid, what good can you do in this world? How would you do it? And then go and do it. Find out a way. Z is the end of the alphabet, but not of America's story. Strong and free, we will continue to be an inspiration to the world. And then finally, a quote from Ronald Reagan. I know that for America, there will always be a bright dawn ahead. And there's a quotes from the famous song America the Beautiful. Hey, wait, don't sing that. That's my song. That's my song. Well, I guess you can do it now because we're done with the book. <coughs> Maestro, the music, please. All right, here we go. America, America, God shed his grace on me. It's the melee. Um, what, Green Bear? You do a terrible job when I have to hold the flag. Sorry, sorry, I, I can move that. Hey, there's a chorus. Yeah. Four amber waves of gray. This sounds good. Four purple mountain majesty. Okay, that's all I got. I still have to memorize the rest of the song. It's okay. That was really good. You think so? Do you think they noticed that I cut it off halfway through? No, no. They don't know. They can't tell. Can you tell? Um, no. See, she couldn't tell at all. Okay, let's go. I'll help you learn the words, and then we'll do a dance, and then we'll eat. Oh, okay. That's a great idea. Except, let's eat first, and then we'll sing, and then we'll eat again some more, and then we'll do the dance, okay? That sounds like a good idea, because you know why? Why? Because this is America and we can do stuff! Yeah! Ugh. Well, he is right. Okay, kid. Well, I hope you enjoyed my very special concert performance of America and this story also by the storyteller. See you later, kid. Bye, kid. See you next time on Kid Time Story Time.